Here in New Zealand, we like the outdoors. We also like free range products. So in this video, we're combining the two and we're having an outdoor free range oscilloscope. But on a serious note, Miniware sent me this, their DS211 oscilloscope. At the time of making this video, it retails for only 65 US dollars. And spoiler alert, that is one heck of a bargain. So we're going to do a quick review in this video, and then we're gonna head where else but outdoors to do a bit of an experiment. But first, we need to unbox this back at my workshop. Let's begin by unboxing. Inside, you'll find a quick start guide. And of course, the DS211 oscilloscope. The display is a 2.8 inch color LCD screen with enough brightness that it can be used in broad daylight. On the front you'll find the navigation and menu buttons. On the left hand side you'll find two MCX sockets. The top socket is an input for things like a probe and the other socket is used as a function generator output. There is also a USB port for charging the internal battery and upgrading the firmware. On the right hand side is the power on off switch. Lastly on the back of the unit we have a warning label not to exceed 40 volts input. Although the maximum input voltage is quite low at 40 volts, if you consider using the 10x divider on the included probe, this means I can measure up to 400 volts safely. Included with the probe is a set of probe tip covers. The oscilloscope boots up in a matter of seconds. Let's pause here for a moment to quickly explain how to navigate the menu system. Here we have a list of menus we can access. The plus and minus buttons change the highlighted menu then to access that menu, press the M button. From here you can scroll through various settings to set up the scope according to your needs. Let's put the scope to work by connecting it to my function generator. With a signal on the screen, I can change the volts per division to show the waveform. Under the trigger menu, we have several options to choose from. For now, I'll just leave it on auto. Under the X axis menu, I can change the time per division as shown. Under the measurement menu, I can choose between several measurements to display on the bottom row, including frequency, duty, RMS, peak to peak, and so on. When using the 10x divider, you can find the probe attenuation setting under the Y axis menu. You'll notice a number 10 icon appear in the top left corner to confirm what mode you're using. At this point, a lot of you are probably wondering how does it stack up to a full desktop oscilloscope, and what are the limitations? As a benchmark, I'll use my benchtop power supply and set it to output 5 volts DC. This power supply puts out relatively smooth power, so it should be a good test to see if the DS211 can accurately display any voltage ripple. First, I'll program my siglent scope to examine the voltage ripple from my power supply. The ripple from the power supply is only around 15 millivolts, which is easy enough to inspect and measure on my benchtop oscilloscope. However, on the pocket size DS211, it's difficult to inspect such minuscule ripple. This isn't really a criticism, rather I'm just highlighting some of the limitations a $65 scope has to offer. Now let's get back to that experiment I talked about earlier in the video. I grabbed a pair of alligator clips, an LED, and assembled a full bridge rectifier from four diodes. I soldered the diode leads, 
and then connect it on LED. Now came the terrifying part of this experiment. Heading outdoors. Now for this experiment, I could just do a cutscene straight to location. But I wanted to take you guys on the journey across my parents' property. So, let's get into it. We're going to be riding this lovely Yamaha quad bike. So let's get it fired up. We're going to need this. So the reason for the travel to this location is this right here. We have a set of power lines. But these aren't just normal power lines that would go to your house. This is actually a high voltage power transmission line. Um, I can't say for certain what the voltage is because I can't find any documentation online available to the public on this set of power lines. But I dare say my best guess would be that it's probably within something around 100,000 volts. And that's interesting because we can do some experiments with that. If you listen closely, you can actually hear a rattling noise. The sound has been generated by the power lines themselves when under load. Naturally this is a three phase power line with the centre being neutral and the two outside lines being live or as it's sometimes known, active. One of the few downsides of AC power is power loss through an invisible electric field around the power lines. I can capture some of this power by pushing a grounding rod into the earth and connecting one of the leads from my multimeter. With the meter set to measure AC volts, I raised up the other lead and pointed it towards one of the outside live power lines. As you can see, we're getting around 13 volts AC. One interesting thing I discovered was if I touch the probe with my finger, the voltage shoots up to around 50 volts. On face value it might seem dangerous to have 50 volts AC from my body, however the current here is so low that I can't feel anything and I'm not in any danger of being electrocuted. For the experiment I wanted to see if I could capture enough power to illuminate the LED. To do this I strung out a short length of wire in parallel with one of the live power lines. The voltage was around 30 volts AC, not bad for such a simple setup. For curiosity I used my DS2 on one to inspect the waveform. Here we can see a nice 50 Hz sine wave. 30 volts is more than enough to run an LED, but the question here is, is there enough current? I connected the LED to earth and connected the other side to my wire. 
It's difficult to see in broad daylight, but I couldn't see any visible light being emitted from the LED. I connected my meter across the LED and the voltage was only about 1.9 volts, which isn't enough. I really wanted to see the LED illuminate, so I extended the wire to 25 meters. The voltage was a little higher this time at about 40 volts, so I reconnected the LED, but only achieved a modest voltage gain of 600 millivolts, still not enough. Now I am a little bit disappointed that I couldn't get that LED to illuminate even just a little bit. So although my experiment was a bit of a failure from that standpoint, something that is definitely not a failure is the Miniwear DS211. At the moment it retails for 65 US dollars at the time of making this video. And that is just a fantastic bargain for an entry level oscilloscope. I mean heck. When I was getting into electronics, the cheapest oscilloscopes were in the hundreds of dollars. So really, the DS211? If you need a cheap oscilloscope to get a job done, it's a no-brainer. So I think that about wraps it up for this video. Thank you to my Patreon supporters for your continued support. And maybe there'll be some more experiments with power lines in the future. Let me know if you'd like to see if I can get fluorescent tubes to light up under the power lines at night. Leave a, leave a comment down in the comment section for me. Anyway, thanks for sticking around. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Why am I walking? I've got a quad bike. Ah, it's too hot. I need a cold drink. See ya.